Here at Mid-America Outdoors Complex in the heart of the country, we have some of the best RC drivers from all over the world ready to compete in a new format on a brand new track. Never settling, continuously pushing the limits of RC racing. Established veterans, newcomers with dreams, families from all over the country have come to kick up some dirt. From Jay, Oklahoma, this is RC Racing at Visions Off-Road, presented by A-Main Hobbies. I'm Ken Stout, and we're excited to bring you some of the best RC racers in the world. RC Racing is one of the few motorsport platforms that is truly worldwide, including a world ranking system for the drivers, and we have some of the best here today. Of the 15 drivers competing in the Invitational class, 10 are in the top 22 in the world. Six of those are ranked inside of the top 10, and Ryan Mayfield is the number one ranked driver in the world who will be competing here today. How familiar are you with RC racing? Did you know there were ranked drivers? Did you know that some of these guys are making six figures a year? True professionals? Well, there are, and they're here. And they're all gonna battle for a piece of that $30,000 in prize money. Now, the weapon of choice? Well, that's gonna be a nitro-methane-powered all-wheel drive buggy. And with more on that, let's go to my colleague, Mike Garrison. Thank you, Ken. I'm down here with one of these buggies that is racing this weekend. Our main focus on the eight scale nitro buggy class. These are one eight scale buggies. Obviously, these are a little bit smaller than a traditional race car, but still a lot to them. You can see the nitro engine. We've got the air filters. Basically, infinite adjustment for these guys between the suspension, the chassis, the wheels, the tires. Speaking of the wheels and tires, that's what we have right here. And as you can see, unlike a traditional race car, there's not air inside these tires. There's foam inside these tires. Foam inserts that they come in soft, medium, hard. These guys are modifying them left and right. All sorts of uh, changes they can do for the tread compound as well. Not to mention, also these come in various compounds. So you'll see a lot of the drivers changing compounds depending on how long they're on the track, the track surface. Another thing these guys are looking at, they're working around the clock. When they're in the pits, this is just one thing they work on, the differentials. These cars are equipped with oil-filled differentials, front, center, and rear. By changing the viscosity of oil in the front, center, and rear, they can change drastically how the car handles. Another thing we look at is suspension. Suspension being these dampers right here, oil-filled shocks. Inside that, you can change the shock piston, your ride height, and of course, your springs and spring race as well. A lot of adjustment, a lot goes into these like I say, they may not look exactly like a traditional race car, but these are the real deal. More on the track, let's head down to Scotty Ernst. Thanks, Mike. Now that we've learned the key components about these race cars, now the other component is the racetrack. We have nine turns on the circuit. The difference is the jumps in the circuit. There's small ones, there's big ones, the big step up in the middle, over six foot in the elevation changes. And that's pretty much the make or break section of the racetrack. Most drivers will jump it, slap it onto the face, and then roll over the top. The risky part is to jump the whole thing, try to land the downside. It's gonna be a great place to make a pass. The question is, are the racers gonna be able to pull it off? Here's the format, 11 drivers are invited, four drivers race their way in. We'll have three races, 40 laps in distance, all three count, 1,500 to win a race here, 5,000 to win the overall, and a $5,000 bonus if you can win them all. As we get set to go here, you can see the cars are warmed up, all cars up in the air, and they are down and quiet, and we are off and underway. Invite Nitro Buggy, A main number one. Yeah, and I saw one of those mechanics drop that car very last second. Everybody else had put the car on the ground, so maybe some strategy there, but I actually thought he was a tick late. Ryan Mayfield right now going to be leading us out, and for the competition, this is the worst spot you can put Ryan Mayfield is starting out front as he is... Uh, He's going to be tough to be reckoned with here as Seth Van Dalen in the number two spot. Yeah, we talk about how the lineup was. So we had three qualifiers one day ago, and they start off based on how they finished that qualifier. Qualifier number one, it was Mayfield that won it. Consequently, he starts out front. Seth Van Dalen right there behind him. Spencer Ribkin had a great day in all three qualifiers uh, a day ago as well. Ryan Lutz and then Jared Tebow now round out your top five. Well, here they come back around on the backside, and as Ryan had mentioned, these guys are the best in the world, and to see them make a mistake, it's rare. But on this track, almost every single one of these drivers have had at least multiple mistakes, if not major crashes throughout their runs in qualifying. So it's going to be tough here in these main events. And it might not even be a mistake. It just might be a curveball from the track as we watch this first 40-lap main. This is a hard lap count, not a timed event. 
Yeah, 36 laps left to go here in this one. Ryan Mayfield leads us out. Spencer Ribkin in that number two spot. The Kyosho Ryan Lutz in third. Seth Van Dalen in fourth. And world champ Ty Tessman in the oh. number five spot. Oh, mistake there for Ribkin. Gets inside the two. That's going to drop him back a spot. Ryan Lutz now up into the number two spot. Ryan Lutz, a solid player as well. We'll keep an eye on these guys up in the front. Finished up fourth in the first qualifier yesterday and then finished and then won the second qualifier. So Lutz a player, man. He can for sure get it done. Well, and Ryan Lutz had mentioned to us yesterday in the pits, just talking to him, that he was going for a more of a lightweight setup, a little bit smaller track, shorter lap times. He was working on that Kyosho car, trying to get it dialed in, and it looks like right now he's got it working well for him. Yeah, I've been racing for near 30 years, so a lot of seat time there for Lutz. Second of the DNC in the Pro Electric, and also fifth at the uh, Pro Nitro, uh, in a Pro Nitro Truggy. So uh, really, really talented driver, but so far nothing for Mayfield out there. And we watched Mayfield do this one day ago. He's so deadly consistent, and he just keeps putting in the laps. And a lot of times the race just comes back to him. It really does, and he knows how to play the game, that's for sure. Ty Tessman moving up at the number four spot now. Mason Fuller in fifth. You see that pack of cars mid-pack right there. Fuller, Tebow, Wiggins, Denny, and Pavitas all right there. Ryan Mayfield, though, still leading the way. Ryan Lutz in that number two spot. Mayfield driving the Mugen J Concepts car, working his way back into the infield section. Ribkin sitting back in third. Kiyosho, you talked about that for Lutz. Ribkin. Uh, sitting back there in third of Team Associated. J Concept tires on that one. 17 events so far this year. Ranked events, I should say, with a couple of podiums. Uh, he has been right there, 11 top fives. Expecting uh, expecting good things out of him. Finished third, fifth, and third in his qualifiers. As we talked about, had a great day one day ago. And a new fast lap of the race has just been set there. A 20.927 by Ryan Lutz in the number two spot. Fast lap for Ryan Mayfield right now is a 21-1. So... Ryan Lutz's fast lap is about two-tenths of a second faster than Mayfield's fast lap at this point. But as you've mentioned, it's consistency. It's all going to come down to who can be consistent and put in consistent fast laps and not just one or two. And the leaders front of the field already completed 10 of the 40 laps or a quarter of the way through this race. And you talked about pit stops. It's going to be an important part of this. And who had the best pit stops during qualifying? It was Ryan Mayfield, the only team to break the five-second mark. A 4.99-second pit stop. We'll find out if he can get it done here again today. But he's being attacked right now by Ryan Lutz all over the wing. Yeah, Lutz is putting the pressure on him hard right now. And then those pit stops, his mechanic this weekend and doing the pit stops, Drew Spurgeon doing a fantastic job. And it may come down to the pit stops here in this one. Yeah, the pit stop delta will be able to tell you what they are uh, as they pop up, but somewhere oh. typically in the five to six second range and a moment there for Lutz. Yeah, Ryan Lutz just catching the landing on that one just a bit wrong. He goes tumbling. That is now going to allow Spencer Rifkin up into the number two spot with Ryan Mayfield. With some breathing room now. He can take a deep breath, and this is exactly where he wants to be here for AMA number one. We had a chance to speak with Ryan Mayfield a little bit earlier about the practice sessions and this track. It's awesome to be invited here. Uh, so far, we're having a great time. It's going to be a, the survival of the fittest out there as far as who can actually just put a clean run in. So far, there hasn't been a single guy. Where, I mean, we're some of the best guys in the world at this. I haven't seen a single person put in a clean run yet. So um, it's going to be interesting who can balance that speed and consistency out and I'm still looking for it. If you're a competitive person, you can race RC cars and kind of scratch that itch and you can do it safely. For me, I get to travel the world to do this. I think it means a lot for the RC industry to have this event at Visions amongst all the full-scale guys and a lot of kids and family members that are here watching maybe their brother or father race the full-size stuff. They get to see the RC car stuff. So if we can keep this going, it's awesome. Well, we got 24 laps left to go here in this one. Ryan Mayfield leading us out, but look at Spencer Ripken. Ripken has really closed the gap up on Mayfield. Ripken bumps that inside tube just a little bit there, loses a few tenths of a second. Here they come back onto the back side of the track, and you can see Ryan Lutz right there with him as well. And I, again, I mean, I just think it goes back to Mayfield running consistent laps here. Maybe there's a little more speed in the car, but whenever you find that speed, you risk it just a little bit. And that's what we've seen out of Ripken and Lutz. Ripken right there now, though. Oh, oh and closing wow. out of the way. An aggressive move right there to take the lead. Ripken right there showing him a wheel. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday throughout qualifying as well. 
They, these drivers say it's going to get extreme. There's some big money on the line, and they got to do what they got to do to, to uh, take that number one spot. Rivkin saw the opening right there. He took it, got in there, showed him the wheel. It put Mayfield upside down. Now, what Rivkin's got to watch out for with 22 laps left to go, if Mayfield can catch back up, Mayfield knows how to make some moves. So it's, uh, we may see some fireworks before the end of this one. Right, if that's the game you want to play, I've got that in my repertoire, and we'll pull it out of the bag if you want to go that route. Of course, right in the middle, that is Lutz. So all three of them uh, will be very close here again. Ryan Lutz also able to take advantage of that. Let's go back and watch his pass. Yeah, watch this instant replay right here. Little bit of, yep. Mayfield just left the door open just enough. Ribkin took advantage of it and uh, put him upside down. Luckily landed back on his wheels. Only lost a couple spots. They've got about a five-second lead. Your top three on fourth, so they got a little breathing room. You can see right now uh, Jared Tebow a lap down from these guys in the mix there uh, as Ribkin trying to work his way back around out front here in this one. Tebow finishing up fifth, fourth, and fourth of the three qualifiers. The Techno driver, another one, extremely talented, ranked sixth in the world. See if he can pick up the pace here just a little bit. He is deeper in the field for sure after starting off in fifth. Well, we're going to start seeing some pit stops as well with only 19 laps left to go. We'll see if Spencer Rivkin comes in for fuel this time around or not. You can see team associate is Richard Saxton. He's ready to go. Rivkin's coming in for fuel. That's his mechanic right there, Richard Saxton. He is in. He's on the wall. Saxon with the fuel gun. He is in and out. A good pit stop for him there. Ryan Lutz, though, comes out right behind him. That's going to be a battle for first and second now. Ripken with a 6.4 second pit stop, a 6.199 for Lutz. So Lutz a little bit quicker there in the pit stop range. Ryan Mayfield yet to come in, and we saw this one day ago as well. Mayfield will run a couple of extra laps. As people pull off in front of him, it opens up the track. He can stick some good clean laps and then come in and make his pit. And there's Mayfield in and out of the pits right there. Drew Spurgeon with another fantastic pit stop. 4.9 second wow. pit stop. Mayfield is back in the running. There's something here for everybody at Mid-America Outdoors. How about the Barbie Jeep downhill race? Yes, fun all around. We'll be right back. This Visions Off-Road Telecast is brought to you by A-Main Hobbies. Join in and share the fun with A-Main Hobbies. Protech RC, proven high-performance RC products. And by Live RC. LiveRC.com is your online hub for RC car racing, news, and event coverage. Welcome back to Mid-America Outdoors for the Visions Off-Road RC Race. Lutz now putting the pressure on Rivkin. Yeah, he's right there on the on the wing as well. And Rivkin with a little bit of a mistake right there. A two-time two-wheel drive champion as oh. well. Rivkin tumbles. Ryan Lutz now up to the number one spot. Well, how about that? Hands, hands it over to him. Cable came up there as well that they are utilizing out here for this race. Yeah, Ryan Lutz right now out front. He's just got to keep it smooth and on all four wheels at this point. We're watching the pros now, but the fans also have an opportunity to drive these cool cars. And with more on that, let's go to Scotty Ernst. Thanks, Ken. We're here at the other side of the RC experience here at Vision. The A-Main Hobbies ready to run Try Me Track. And I'm here with Troy Hanson from A-Main Hobbies. Troy, this is a great opportunity to get kids a chance to try these ready to run trucks. Absolutely, Scotty. Uh, the kids and adults alike uh, come here from the Mid-America event and they check out the pros on the big track and then they just walk 20 steps over and they can get on the A-Main Hobbies Trimi tracks, drive a team associated vehicle and, and try it themselves and see how fun these cars are. The great side of our hobby and these ready to run vehicles is they, the kids learn about gears and tires and things like that. Right now, kids all they know about is phones and computers. This is a chance to get them some mechanical skills and really work on the vehicles. They're simple, they can take them out of the box and run them, but they're a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, RC allows kids great experience, teaches them patience, gets them out of the house, gets them running around around the track, marshalling the cars, and it's just it's a great overall experience. You see the smiles on these kids' face, boys and girls and young and old. Big kids are here, too, just having a blast. Absolutely. It's not just kids. We've got adults trying to track the cars on the track. It's, it's just great. 
here we go again. Ripken could have got into him on that one. You saw him check up just a little bit. He said, ah, you know what? I've already got you once in this race. I'm not going to do it again. As they come back around down on the side straight, Ryan Lutz right now out front with a 2.2 second lead. Now it's down to 1.9. So the last lap by Ryan Lutz gained nearly three tenths of a second. That doesn't sound like much, but in a 10 lap, uh, 10 laps left to go, he could very well catch Ryan Lutz here this one. Yeah, and I think you saw Ripken make that aggressive move. That was for the lead. He did not make the aggressive move for second place. Oh. And just like that, Ripken goes for a big ride oh and trouble right there from Mayfield as well. Yeah, Mayfield up on the pipe there, able to save it. And that's going to allow Mayfield to focus all of his attention ahead of him, chasing down Ryan Lutz now. He no longer has to worry about Ribkin right behind him. He doesn't have to play any defense. And as you would say, offense is the most important. Now he's all – oh, and there's Ryan Lutz. That? Lutz makes a mistake. Unbelievable. We've got them both side by side now. Here they come. This is going to be a race right down to the wire with only eight laps left to go. Exciting stuff here, two of the absolute best going at it. This is for the lead, 1,500 bucks on the line. Lutz out front, Mayfield applying all the pressure. Yeah, and of course, obviously the winner of this oh, one, Ryan Lee to the inside. He's got the move. Mayfield now taking over the number one spot. Lutz is going to try to dive back to the inside right here. Lutz playing clean, though. Look at that setup, man, for that left-hander in midair. A beautiful job out of both guys. Absolutely the best doing it here and showing us why they are the best. Mayfield getting a little bit of a gap right here. Well, the winner of this first main. Oh, oh. Mayfield, a mistake. Here comes Lutz now. Lutz going to try and dive up the inside. Not going to be close enough. The winner of this main is going to be the only driver with that chance to win all three for that $5,000 bonus. So this is an important main right here. Oh, they touched just a bit. And look at that. Ryan Lutz, even for the lead, checked up. No doubt this track is ever-changing and for sure putting everybody to the test. Scotty? We're in final number one right now, and things are changing already. We saw that big step-up jump in the middle. We call it the make-or-break section. It's caught a couple guys already. Mayfield has been out front, but we saw Rivkin and Lutz both have trouble going through that section. It is one of the hardest sections on the racetrack. Agreed 100%. Some guys were able to double it, but recently it looks like everybody has to single it. Good look there from the live RC track cam as they come back around down into turn two. So we talked about the top two, a little bit of a gap between the two. Ripken has managed to hang on to third place. And once again, this battle for the lead is tight again. Cole Ogden and Jared Wiggins inside of the top five and a little bit of a stumble again out of Lutz. And it looks like Lutz may be trying to close the gap up just a little bit here. Three laps left to go, Ken. This is going to be a barn burner right down to the wire. Mayfield really has that 180 down to tag that left-hander. Uh, nails it perfectly every time. Some pretty violent holes in there. He's going to have some lap traffic here with a couple to go. Yeah, this may play a part in that as well. Two laps now left to go here for these guys as they work their way back around onto the front side of the track. Again, just nails it perfectly here. and. Lutz right behind him, not letting him get away. Wow, I thought Lutz was going to clear the step up there for a moment. This is it. They're going to get the white flag this time by. Mayfield with a little bit of breathing room again as Lutz has fallen back just a bit. Keep in mind, it's a 3A main scoring system here to win the overall $5,000. Here they come into the step up section one final time through the switchback. They drop down. Lutz is pushing so hard right now, and I don't think he's got it unless Mayfield makes a mistake here. Mayfield looks to have a clear win. Down the straight they go, and Ryan Mayfield is your A-Main number one winner. Man, and he hucked it into that last turn after crossing the stripe. So cool. He'll also grab 1500 bucks for winning this one as well. Here's a look at your finishing order. And, of course, they'll earn points here for this first moto, and Ryan Mayfield at the top of that one as well. Let's go down and talk to our winner. Oh, man, that was absolutely fantastic, Ryan. You have been in battles your entire career. It doesn't get any more intense than that. Yeah, that was, uh, you can see my hands. It's uh, the track's so gnarly, man. I mean, we're driving at 110% the whole time. I was just trying to get in a rhythm in the beginning and just find my flow. And um, Spencer got into me a little bit. I mean, I was a little wide, you know, we're racing for money, so it's all good. I, I recouped, I recovered, and... I just tried to charge my way back to the front, and uh, man, that was intense. It was nice to get that one out of the way. I, I started first, so you got to capitalize when you can start on pole, and um, Ryan starts on pole next run, so I think I start third, so it's going to be interesting for sure. No doubt coming in here and proving why he is number one in the world, Ryan Mayfield picks up the first win, but he's far from done. We have two more races yet to go.
Welcome back to Mid-America Outdoors here in Jay, Oklahoma. It is a warm day for sure in the middle of the U.S., but the racing here is smoking hot, and the crew members are ready to set these things down in the dirt and start race two. As these drivers get in the final top off of fuel here before this race gets underway. Sean, the official race starter there, Sean Knorr. Cars are up. They are down and quiet and off and underway. Here we go. A main number two invite Nitro Buggy. They do not take that 180 turn number uh, two. We typically call it here. They'll go all the way around, make one full lap, and now they'll take the 180 and come back to the infield. A little bit of breathing room for everybody here, and so far Ryan Lutz off to a good start. You talked about it before. The car had a ton of speed. If he can get out here, get a little bit of breathing room like he has right now, get a couple of laps underneath his belt, get that muscle memory where he wants, get a little bit of rhythm going, he could be very tough to catch. Yeah, but Ken, I tell you what, Ryan Mayfield has already made the move on Jerry Wiggins. He's already up to second place, and that can only mean one thing. Another battle of the Ryans is getting set to uh -oh. oh, wow. Lutz gets up on two wheels, lands Here it back. Here comes Mayfield. Oh, Mayfield no. gets in the back of him. Mayfield, your leader, as Lutz gets up into the tube turn there in that very tight right hander, and it cost him a number of positions. Well, now Ryan Mayfield is out front leading once again, and this is the worst possible position for the rest of the competition is to put Mayfield back out front. Jared Wiggins in that number two spot. Cole Ogden, who we heard from a little bit earlier, in that number three spot. All right, just to, uh, just to let you know, this one is far from over, ladies and gentlemen. He started off on the pole in the last race. We had three different leaders inside of that race, and just like that, he goes off the track, lands on the inside of the tube, and gets passed. Ryan Mayfield now struggling back into the number three spot, so that's going to put Jared Wiggins out front here in this one. Jared Wiggins, the Techno RC driver, the wizard better known as, as he works his way onto the back side of the track. He's got Cole Ogden breathing down his neck right now, though. What a big moment it would be if, if uh, Wiggins could pull this one off and Cole Ogden just goes for a ride. Yeah, the track reached up there and bit Ogden on that one. That's going to put Mayfield back up at the number two spot. And look at this, Ryan Pavitas, the youngster, working his way up into the mix. The son of legendary Mark Pavitas, multi-time national world champion driver. Uh, fantastic run here for Ryan Pavitas early on in this one. 35 laps left to go. Well, Wiggins done a number of events so far here in 2022, but has yet to get up into uh, a podium position. This would be a huge win for him if he can stick it together. Of course, a lot of racing yet to be done here, just six laps into this 40-lap main event. But right now, he's looking really good. The driver out of Texas is out front with a nice pad. Uh, there you see Ryan Mayfield right there. Ryan Pavitas behind him in the number three spot. Cole Ogden going to be in the four. Caden Fuller in the five spot. Caden Fuller is a bump-up driver out of our open class. He won one of those open qualifiers and worked his way up into the uh, invite class. So working his way from, from 14th on the grid. A great battle going on here in this A-Main number two. Kind of settling down here just Ooh. a little bit and another tough moment here. This time, I believe it was that, uh, that was Mayfield again. It was indeed. Mayfield coming off that, hitting a hole there, just chunked a huge hole out of the track, a big rock right there. And Mayfield appears to be broke. The front left on Mayfield is broke. He is out of this race. This will make it very difficult for him to win the overall, never mind the sweep. Right, Scotty? Oh, my goodness. You saw what just happened. The leader, the winner of A main number one, Ryan Mayfield, poised for the sweep, breaks something in the left front. The look on his face when he turned around here in a driver's stand, undescribably, he is absolutely distraught with his chance at the sweep over. As we take a look at him, has moved his way up into second place, started off in eight. Oh, boy, getting all sorts of sideways. Cole Ogden going to go around the outside there. I would say at this point, the pain is out of his mind. And uh, there you see a very disappointed Ryan Mayfield coming off the driver's stand as he is broke. And, and what a rare instance. I mean, we've been here Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We've seen him hit way, way harder than that. I think we've only seen one other car go out with a, with a failure like that. These things are so durable. They really are, and, and it just goes to show, I mean, it was the perfect storm right there and just the right or just the wrong hit, I guess I should say, for Ryan Mayfield. A, a tragic situation there is obviously clearly he had the speed and was the only driver that had the opportunity to sweep this thing, and he's not going to sweep it, but still, he still may have a shot at the overall. We'll have to find out how that shakes out when we come back here with more racing from Mid-America Outdoors.
This Vision's Off-Road Telecast is brought to you by A-Main Hobbies. Join in and share the fun with A-Main Hobbies. J-Concepts, world-proven innovation and design. And by VP Racing Fuels. VP is the winningest Nitro RC Fuel brand in the world. As you can see, Jared Wiggins doing what he's got to do, staying out front. He's lost a little bit of time there with uh, Ryan Pavitas gaining just a bit. 5.8 seconds back, but still a healthy lead here for him with only nine laps to go. An opportunity to win some big money for sure. We had a chance to speak with Jared a little bit earlier in the weekend to find out what motivates him. I would say what motivates me is the competitiveness. It, the sport's ever-changing. There's so many good drivers and so many people that can win the race. There's not like... You don't really ever get stuck somewhere. There's always progress to be made, things to figure out, and you know, ultimately people to try and beat. So that kind of constant progression is really exciting and keeps you working hard and into it. Because you know, when you get into it, you're just doing it for fun and uh, just enjoying it, you know, racing your RC car. But uh, being able to do this as a job now, it's definitely changed because there's a little bit more stress involved. I try not to take too many new things to a race because you know unless it's really tested over and over you never know quite how stuff's going to feel and drive and you need your stuff to be comfortable and confident racing at a high level and I think just giving them the extra step of exposure where they can see what's going on and see how cool it is I think that's really going to help the industry in general. Coming back around once again, yeah, 5.3 seconds back, Ryan Pavitas in second, Cole August still in third, Ty Tessman, the X-ray driver in fourth, Seth Van Dalen in the number five spot, Denny, Tebow, Fuller, Fuller, Mechanic, Rivkin, rounding out uh, the rest of the field here in this one. 35 in the book, soon to be 36 here as he sails it up over the double one more time and into that final turn number nine to turn one and two, that tough 180 with a hole right in the middle of it, navigates around the outside of the hole nicely, back into a pair left up over the step up, a lapper right there kindly being very respectful to the leader and moves over out of the way. Yeah, that was young Phelong win right there. Our, uh, oh! oh, big mistake there for Wiggins. Boy, did he get lucky there and not flip that thing. He did, and it looks like the whole front end of that car is still good. Everything's all uh, all intact, so nothing uh, nothing stopping him at this point with only three laps left to go. But, yeah, right there ahead of him, that is Phelong win. The uh, young 10-year-old driver working his way up into the invite and running here with the pro guys. Wiggins way wide right there, opening up the door for some lap traffic to get up in there and – uh, actually backed off just a little bit. Uh, I believe that's Lutz, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Lutz is going to be very respectful knowing he's leading this race. Yeah, you are correct. Ryan Lutz, a super clean driver regardless, and uh, he's going to be clean here with Wiggins. He says, excuse me, I'm going to go on by and try to make up some time that I have and lost. I'm sure here. Wiggins is like, you know what, let him go, man. I do yep. not need to run at his pace. Absolutely, absolutely. He, Wiggins knows at this point right now that he's got almost a 10-second lead on Cole Ogden, second with only one lap left to go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a career highlight, no doubt, for Jared Wiggins, the Techno RC driver, as he was working his way around here. So how about that? We're coming around here to complete this last lap. The wizard, Jared Wiggins, looking to pick up a very prestigious win here. Oh, in his no! And he just balled it up. Did he cross the stripe? Not yet. He, He's not he did at the same time, and it's scoring says, oh, he was right there at it. Simon Scoring says he put 40 laps in. We think he won this race and picks up 1500 bucks. It was nice and calm there for the longest time, and Jared Wiggins gave us quite the scare at the very end. As we look at Simon and Scoring, it still says Jared Wiggins is our winner. 40 laps complete, but oh boy. Did he give us a scare at the end? Gave himself wow. a scare. <laughs> he did, and you saw him there up on the driver's stand. He looked over at the uh, the race score tower. He looked at the race director and gave him the thumbs up like, did I get it? Did I get it? You know, wow, what a finish to that one. Let's take an instant replay of that. Watch this. Jared Wiggins up and over that back jump. All he's got to do is come down the straight, but look at that. The car gets unsettled, bounces, and there you can see the start-finish line right there, and it just got him just barely. As you can see, there's Sean Miller, the uh, the track crew worker. And when he hit the dirt, he was wide open. He didn't want to lose that. And uh, wow, what a race right there for Jared Wiggins. Solid effort as he brings it home. And of course, we'll grab the 1500 bucks to go along with it. Here's a look at the entire finishing order. And we're also going to show you the points after two of three motos complete. How about that? A tie at the top going into the third and final moto. This is going to be a lot of fun. Let's talk to our winner. 
What happened? Oh, a foot from the finish line. I was just trying to just trying to finish it out and like that back right corner is so hard and so I didn't want to like crank the wheel and try and drive tight on the pipe because you see if you pick up a rock you go tumbling. So I thought I took the safe line and apparently the, that line ended me two feet before the line in the in the fence. But thankfully Sean got it back going. I had enough of a lead where it, it worked out. So just trying to maintain towards the end. I got a nice lead and was just like sitting there just trying not to crash. So this track's tough out there and was, everything worked great. It was a good, good day. There's a beautiful big $1,500 check to Jared Wiggins. He's going to have a chance to win one more just like it when we come back to Mid-America Outdoors. Welcome back to Mid-America Outdoors here in Jay, Oklahoma. We're just outside of Tulsa by about an hour or so in the middle of the U.S. It's a beautiful day out here in a gorgeous complex as well for the Visions Off-Road RC Race, A-Main number three. 40 lap race here, looks like a good clean start. Ty Tessman gonna be leading us out, the X-Ray driver out of Canada. Ryan Mayfield right there behind him. We got Spencer Rivkin in the number three spot, the team associated driver. And we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on points as it shakes down right now because Ty Tessman was right there in the third position. He was a few points back. They were tied up at the top between Wiggins and Ogden, but this will change lap by lap. And right now, Ty Tessman out front leading the way. Look at the lead. He's already starting to stretch out here in this one with 38 laps left to go. Spencer Rivkin now for the number two spot. It looks like trouble for Mayfield as Jared Tebow up to the three spot. Ryan Pavitas in the four and Tyler Hooks in the five. So we'll keep an eye on these guys as they deal with that step up. It's been an issue the entire weekend. So tough to navigate through there, and especially towards the end of this weekend where the track has taken its toll and one up and over. That was Spencer Rivkin going tumbling right there. That's going to allow Jared Tebow, the Techno RC driver, move his way up into the number two spot now as he chases down Ty Tessman. Pavitas now up into the number three spot. Pavitas right there trying to get around Tebow. Tebow so tough. Tebow staying right there on the pipe, drives away just a little bit. Up onto the back side of the track, coming down the side straight now. Ryan Pavitas chasing down Jared Tebow, that time by the line, a 22-1 for both of those drivers. And as you can see, there's Ryan Lutz. Ryan Lutz putting the pressure on Jared Wiggins. Wiggins, our second main event winner, sitting right now back in the number six spot. Yeah, and if it ended right now, Wiggins is currently second, Ty Tessman first, so we'll keep an eye on these points. Obviously very early on here with just a handful of laps complete. Yeah, Jared Wiggins at this point right now, he just needs to dig deep, focus, and click off as many positions as he can, get by as many drivers, especially with Ty out front here in this one. So Tebow and Pavitas is who we're looking at right there. That is second and third. Tebow trying to drive away just a little bit, and you can see where some are a little bit better on one end of the track, others are a little bit better on the other end of the track, so it'll be kind of like an accordion where we'll stretch out and then close back up. Yeah, Pavitas Jared, right there really opened that turn up. He really did, and Jared is always uh, very good in the technical sections of a track, especially like this infield. Make a little mistake right there, let, allows Ryan Pavitas to close the gap up just a bit on him as they head on to the backside. And again, starts to stretch it out. Just it does a really nice job around the back there. Turns eight and nine, the final two turns. And over that big double, sticks that landing right at the apex of turn number nine. Pavitas right there trying to hang tough. Has lost just a little bit of ground. So first, second, and third, a little bit of breathing room. But any sort of bobble. And we've seen this racetrack. Uh, the rocks that are in it, the holes that are in it, the ruts that are in it. Right, uh -huh. just like that can change the complexity of this race immediately. Yeah, that was Jared Tebow just catching a hole right there, allowing Ryan Pavitas to get on by. So Pavitas back up to the number two spot now. Tebow into third. Rivkin is in fourth, Lutz in fifth, and Ryan Mayfield, who we saw starting second, had a rough start in this one, but now he's back up to the number six spot. 
Ryan Lutz, one of the favorite coming in here for sure. An absolute veteran, one of the best to drive an RC car. And he's been driving these things since he was just about old enough to walk. We spoke to him earlier. My dad's had a hobby shop pretty much my whole life. So I've always been around RC cars and just picked it up from when I was seven when I started racing. But I mean, I had an RC car since I was four in my hands, just driving around the house. You wouldn't ever think of me as competitive when I'm like, conversing with somebody else. But if you watch my car on the track, my car is probably one of the most aggressive. And you look up at me on the driver's stand, I'm like calm as can be. And, but I just like competing. I like trying to win, do the best that I can every time. And I just realized, though, that if I don't win, that's just what it was that day. You know, I give it 100%, 100% of the time, and it falls where it may. RC is a ton of fun. You're learning engineering. You're learning tons of stuff about the cars. And there's so much to set them up. They can almost set up more things than on a real car. So it's a great thing for children, families, and it's awesome to be able to showcase that. And Wiggins giving Denny a little bump there, rolling him over, sends him to the back of the pack. And you know what? Denny asked for it. Denny went way, way wide at the entry there to turn number two. And, of course, you can see Wiggins really tightened it up, was right there whenever Denny tried to close the door back on him, just didn't get it done. Yeah, Ty Tessman out front right now with a 2.7 second lead over Ryan Pavitas in the number two spot. Mayfield has worked his way back up to third. Lutz in fourth, Tebow in fifth, and Jared Wiggins in sixth. Can't believe Ryan Mayfield coming again, and uh, he's going to be sick if he gets up in there and uh, closes the deal on this third and final AMA, knowing he had a mechanical there, and AMA number two. Fun to watch him come up through the pack, though, as once again you take a look at first and second. It is not that far apart. No, they are right there together. They uh, strong contenders here in this one. This is still anybody's race. 27 laps to go. A little mistake there for Jared Tebow. That's going to allow Wiggins to close the gap up on him. Those two drivers, teammates on the Techno RC team. Ty Tessman out front with the X-ray car. Ryan Pavitas, the HP racing driver. Oh, oh, and Wiggins goes for a tumble there in that final turn. It has bit a number of people and loses three spots like that. And that hurts right there. That's going to drop uh, Wiggins down in the total points right now. But I tell you who that does help is Ryan Mayfield. That's going to move Ryan Mayfield's chances up at an overall, potentially, depending on how he and Ty finish in this one. You know, we were thinking, man, look at that gaggle of cars. Everybody trying to sort it out as they go tumbling. We were thinking my Mayfield didn't have a shot at this overall. But, ladies and gentlemen, as we sit here and watch it, Ryan Mayfield currently third in the points, just three out of second and just eight out of first. So it is not over by any stretch. Absolutely not. 24 laps left to go here. Wiggins just trying to uh, gather himself after all that chaos there. He's back up into the number seven spot. He's chasing down Spencer Ribkin now in six. Ryan Lutz making a pit stop right now. So Lutz is in the pits. Interesting strategy at less than six minutes, uh, 5.9 second pit stop. I'm not sure uh, what Ryan Lutz has got, uh, got planned here. So we've talked about that many times, uh, depending on what uh, conditions are around him with other competitors. Maybe he feels like he gets that pit stop made now and can get himself some clean track. The undercut, as it's referred to sometimes, uh, may help him out. It's going to be close. He's going to really be pushing fuel mileage to the best of my knowledge. Is uh, If he wants to only make one more pit stop after this, uh, it's, yeah, he's going to be pushing it. We'll see. So a little more than half the race, uh, as you talked about, we've uh, completed 18 of the 40 laps. You're exactly right. He'll have to go some 23 laps. Well, here's the battle right now between Pavitas and Mayfield. They got some uh, lap track in, traffic in between them there. Mayfield gets by. Pavitas in that all-orange car. Ryan Mayfield in the blue, pink, and white, his signature paint scheme as they come through the center section. We'll take a quick break here, and then we'll come back and find out who's going to win this thing. In the meantime, how about a ride down the lazy river here at Mid-America Outdoors? This Visions Off-Road RC Race is brought to you by A-Main Hobbies. Join in and share the fun with A-Main Hobbies. Live Time, the motorsports timing experts. And by Live Race Media, the experts in state-of-the-art live broadcasting motorsports coverage. Welcome back to Mid-America Outdoors. We are in moto number three, about halfway through with Ty Tessman, our leader. 
Well, here they come up. Oh, Mayfield making a mistake there. Gets up on the back wheels, is able to save it as he bounces his way back around. He's got Fee Long Win right there behind him. Now, Fee is going to be a lap down from them, so he's going to try to stay out of the traffic and uh, out of the mix for the run here. There's Ryan Pavitas in that number two spot here in this one. A fantastic run for him. Well, Pavitas about 3.2 seconds out of the lead here. Ty Tessman, we haven't seen Ty here uh, as of recent. Ryan Mayfield, a couple of seconds uh, back by actually 1.1 second back behind Pavitas as the pit stops continue now as we approach just past the halfway mark. And a good pit stop there. He's got Camden Lime running the fuel gun for him there. He's in and out. There's Tyler Hooks pitted by Doug Hooks. Oh, no, Doug Hooks takes off running. I got a feeling that means trouble for Tyler Hooks. Yeah, not good at all. And notoriously, the last to pit, it seems like, has been Ryan Mayfield all weekend long. He'll go to the point here because he has not pitted. Now pulls in, has also been the quickest to pit. The only person we've seen in the four-second range has done it twice, 5.29 here today. Still a quick pit stop for him right there. He's got Ryan Pavidius, though, right there behind him there as they come back through the switchback section now. The racing action is tight here. Nose to tail. Ty Tessman trying to pick up a win here in this third moto. He's a 17-time Roar national champion. He's been doing this a long time and one of the best ever to do it. I've been racing for 17 years, and it started with my grandma bought me a car from a department store, and then we got a hobby grade car after that, after that one broke. Then my parents started a club in our local town and just kind of snowballed from there. We went to all Canadian races, then eventually went to American races and figured out how fast we had to be and then kind of just worked at it from there. The racing is so close and the times are so close that it's probably going to come down to who doesn't hit this certain rock that comes out of the track or there's holes developing constantly. I think it means a lot to the RC community because of how big of an off-road event it is and that all kind of everybody's in the same mentality of off-road racing and competing, whether you're riding side-by-sides, the, the dirt bikes, the, the rock crawling trucks, whatever it is, you all kind of have a racing desire and competing desire that I think if, you, if they come over and see RC, it's a lot bigger chance for them to maybe start RC or kind of to get out, especially being on TV. Uh, it's just something that really I think the RC community needs to get, out, get their name out there because we've been racing in front of each other for the last 15, 20 years, and I don't know if it's really helped a whole lot, but this kind of racing where you're televised or at a big event is really what we need, to, I think, to make the next step in our seat to really grow the hobby. Yeah, there you see Ryan Mayfield as he is working his way up uh, on the back of Cole Ogden. Ogden going to be a lap down as well. Mayfield 2.4 seconds back with 13 laps left to go now on Ty Tessman. Last time by the line, Mayfield with a 21.6. Ty Tessman a 22.7. Can he gain one second on a race leader last lap around? And Ty Tessman still in position to win the overall with a total of 59 points. If it ended right now, Jared Wiggins back up into the second position with a total of 54 points. And then it goes to Ryan Mayfield. Mayfield right now just trying to find a clean way around, working his way through traffic. Beautiful move right there. Indeed it was. 12 laps left to go here in this one. 1.3 seconds now is all that separates. Now we're looking at Ty Tessman, our race leader. Tessman onto the back side of the track. He got out front early on, started the number one spot. He wants to go from wire to wire here in this one, but I don't know if Mayfield's going to let it happen. Really under control right there. Uh, it doesn't look like he's pushing that thing to the ragged edge. Probably the best way to go about it. Does have some lap traffic right in front of him. He'll have to negotiate. Lap traffic moves over out of the way to be respectful. Clear track once again. Well, look at that, Ken. Coming into the camera shot there. That is Ryan Mayfield. Mayfield has closed the gap up on your race leader. Oh, that was Mayfield tumbling down the front straight. And Mayfield has nothing to lose, man. He had to go for it in this A-Main, and he knows it. That played right in the Ty Tessman's hands. That's something that we've not seen Ryan Mayfield do. Well, yeah, and uh, you see the bottom screen here, your leader, Ty Tessman. Ryan Mayfield in the top screen there. Mayfield in that number two spot. Mayfield, uh, oh, Ty Tessman makes a bobble. Tessman with a mistake now. Ryan Mayfield going to take over the number one spot here in this one. And that bumps Ryan Mayfield as it stands right now into a tie with Ty Tessman. It would be Ryan Mayfield's win overall if he could hang on in front of Ty Tessman. But Tessman goes by. Tessman has made the move now, and Ryan Mayfield drops back to the number two spot. This is incredible racing with nine laps left to go. Oh, and right there, another oh! pass, and they both crash. Both. And they both continue. You've got to be kidding me. Both drivers going into the fence there. Looks like Mayfield got the short of the stick on that one. Tessman takes over the lead here in this one. So Ryan Mayfield dropping back to the number two spot. Unbelievable. Boy, the fact that they oh, all got Oh, and Mayfield is out of this one. Ryan Mayfield is out of the race. 
unbelievable turn of events right there. That is Ryan Mayfield's car being carried off. Yeah, they'll quickly try to get that thing uh, back on the ground, but we're wrapping things up here. Just seven laps to go for Ty Tessman. What a battle there up at the front. Wow, unbelievable right there, Ty Tessman. And is that Tessman upside down right there? Indeed it is. That is Ty Tessman again upside down. Ryan Lutz was eight seconds back from him with seven laps to go. Lutz, Wiggins still in the running for the overall here. Six laps to go now. Ty Tessman working his way around. Tell you what, Ken, Ty has, at this point has just got to keep that car on all four wheels. Yeah, and of course he has to keep his composure as well here. Just six laps remaining. The pressure couldn't be any higher at this particular point. We'll see if he can keep it all together here. No real pressure in terms of a competitor being right behind him. So we'll see if he can keep it together with five laps yet to go. Five laps to go. He's got a 5.6 second lead over Ryan Lutz. Ryan Pavita is a fantastic run here for the young gun in the number three spot. Jared Tebow in the four spot. Spencer Rivkin in that five spot. Five laps to go now. He heads on to the left-hand side of the track. Looks like it cost Tessman about three seconds or so, so not too devastating. Even though he got over his lid, the marshal's doing a great job to put him back over on, on all fours and now taking full advantage of it. Yeah, it looks like right now he's got a clear track ahead of him as well, at least for a few turns, maybe a few more laps. He's only got four laps to go, and as you talked about, he is always looking with his peripheral vision ahead of him and around him on the racetrack. He may slow his pace down just a bit so he doesn't even get involved with these lap drivers up ahead of him. Yeah, as I have mentioned, yeah, you're absolutely right. Managing this race, that's what he needs to do. Nobody in front of him right now. He does have a bit of a gap, and it has just increased actually from five seconds to eight seconds over Lutz. So, again, a little bit of breathing room here. Some of those little bobbles right there, it's all okay. Uh, if he has a headset on, that's where your spotter can say, calm down, man, you're good. No pressure behind you. Just drive your line, drive your car. Keep your driver calm, and it'll pay off. Yeah, and then uh, Ty told us about that in an earlier interview. You know, you're wearing the headsets. He's got his dad and mechanic Gord in his ear, kind of keeping him up to date on what's going on on the racetrack, not only their pit strategy as well. As he comes around, white flag is out. One lap left to go here for Ty Tessman. If he can complete this lap and win this race, now, something to consider here is Wiggins is currently sitting at 56 points. He would need to pick up two more spots in this last lap. Doesn't seem likely, but if he could, he could steal the overall by one point. Here comes Ty Tessman over the double, the final turn. He will pick up this win in the third moto and the $1,500 to go along with it. And how about that? Wiggins is going to do it. He finishes up in third and will steal the overall. Oh, and frustration and words right now between Ryan Mayfield and Ty Tessman up on the driver's stand. Let's see who finishes third. It's a final steal. We got Wiggins getting by Tebow on the last lap for third. Maybe Tebow letting him fly. Who knows? Four positions. And you can see the frustration with uh, Mayfield as they got together onto the back straightaway. Mayfield hot, needless to say. Uh, over that one. What a battle right there, Scotty. You're right in the middle of it. I thought we were going to have to get you a striped shirt for a minute. Man, right in, the, right in the middle of it, no doubt about it there. I was here to congratulate Ty Tessman on an absolute battle there, but everybody's going to be talking right, about so what, what happened with you and Ryan. Uh, well, he, I basically I landed in the middle of the jump coming down the hill. He tried to bully his way by like he always does, and he just got the worst of it this time. He tried to go for a bonsai pass because he had nothing to lose. He knew I had everything to lose, so he just tried to do something stupid, and it didn't work out for him. So I'm happy with how my car went, happy with how that race went. I don't think I did anything wrong. I didn't pinch him off. I just went, I basically didn't just let him buy in for the win. So he, I mean, he would have done the same thing. He would have probably turned into me if I was, if the roles were reversed. So. Well, congratulations on a main three winner. We're going to see how it breaks down, but absolute brilliant drive for you. Thank you. All right, Ty Tessman taking a win here in final number three. Yeah, congrats to him picking up that $1,500. Missed the overall by just one point. Ryan Lutz, Jaron Wiggins there in the top three in that final moto. And speaking of the overall, look at how close it is. Jared Wiggins by one point over Ty Tessman, and he's going to grab the $5,000 that goes along with it. I'm so excited. I didn't know I started ninth. I didn't know if I had a shot at it. And, uh, yeah, I just, just never give up. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Katie down the pits, my mom, my dad, they all did an awesome job, got me in and out fast. And uh, thanks to Jared too, like super awesome having him as a teammate. We worked together really well and I couldn't have done it without him. So thank you. Well, that's what it's all about. It's the teamwork and everything. Here comes, <laughs> here comes Katie jumping in. She was part of the team. You were the, the ace downstairs, you know, great mechanic. You're viral now. I see it all over the internet. Tell us what you're feeling. 
I'm excited. I'm just happy that I was able to contribute somewhat to his program and help him get the win. It's been a busy couple of days of RC racing from the absolute best in the world. Hope you enjoyed it as we brought you the three exciting motos here at Mid-America Outdoors. Congratulations to Jared Wiggins, our overall winner, and thanks to RC Visions Off-Road Racing. See you next time.